All right, folks, we have an insane new development in the Echo Fox saga. Rick Fox, one of the founders of Echo Fox, is suing his former business partners, alleging they committed fraud, breach of fiduciary duty, invasion of privacy, conspiracy, defamation, and caused significant emotional distress to one Rick Fox. But there's something that's way crazier than any of that in this lawsuit. Fox's lawyers allege that one of those business partners is addicted to drugs, and that drug addiction basically has him indentured to Amit Raizada, the shareholder who used the racist language that kicked this whole thing off months ago. You guys are not ready for how crazy this is gonna get. All right, let's do a quick recap. Amir Raizada, a shareholder in Echo Fox, used some racist and threatening language in communications with Jace Hall and Rick Fox. This led to increased scrutiny into Echo Fox from Riot Games, which in turn led to an investigation that forced Echo Fox to sell their LCS slot. Now, EG is the proud owner of that slot, so congrats, EG. Instead, I wanna talk about the new thing we got, a 162-page lawsuit that I 100% didn't print off. These are blank papers. Hey, this guy's a great big phony. But I have read the whole thing, and it alleges some pretty wild stuff about Echo Fox and the business partners that founded it. This is gonna start a little slow, but stick around. We're gonna get to the drug fueled parties pretty soon. Allegedly, this all started when Rick Fox met Amit Raizada for the second time in 2015, where apparently Raizada had this all planned out. The lawsuit says that Rick Fox was orchestrated and manipulated by Raizada, who was attempting to befriend Fox in an effort to use his personal connections, fame, and influence for his own benefit. It also says that Raizada told Rick Fox a heartbreaking story, that he recently got divorced and he was down in his luck, and so Rick Fox took pity on him and wanted to help him get back on his feet. So Fox's lawyers say that this is all part of Raizada's playbook. They say that he does this all the time. He asks or offers mentorship and then gets involved in your business dealings and starts to mess up your company for his own personal gain. Meanwhile, the lawyers say that Rick Fox fell for this alleged scheme because he wanted to learn from Raizada's business experience. So according to the lawsuit, that is how Raizada and Rick Fox got in business together in the first place. They formed a company called Vision Venture Partners, which ended up being the ownership group for Echo Fox, alongside some other folks, Jace Hall and Stratton Sklavos. And we're gonna get into Stratton Sklavos pretty soon. I wanna quote from the lawsuit here, cause this is hilarious. Quote, it took time to peel away the layers of lies and deception, but Fox eventually realized that he had gone to business with two very bad guys, Raizada and Sklavos. I just feel like the phrase very bad guys is a little weird in what is gonna turn out to be a multi-million dollar lawsuit, but more importantly, apparently this revelation of how bad they were happened pretty recently. Fox's lawyers allege that Raizada and Sklavos were manipulating the finances behind the scenes. Now, to refresh you guys, these allegations have come up before. Rick Fox has alleged in the past that Raizada and Sklavos were self-dealing through a complicated series of loan and debt that eventually gave them more money than they'd put into Echo Fox. The rest of the timeline is pretty standard at this point. Fox's lawyers say that Raizada will snap if he's pushed or someone's close to figuring him out, which is allegedly what led to the racial slurs and threatening language he used in conversations with Jace Holland Rick Fox, and again, when we found out about those, that kicked off this whole thing. Now, here's the new part of this lawsuit, though, and this gets insane, so stick with me. Fox's lawyers allege that Sklavos was putting Echo Fox in a tailspin by taking out more and more debt, and this was all happening because he had erratic behavior because of his, quote, drug-fueled lifestyle. I wanna stop for a second and like put this in perspective. We've done three videos about this. This is gonna be the fourth one. This is when we get to the drugs? I wanted this like at the beginning. This is insane. But what do I want more than anything else in this entire world? Yes. Crack. Oh, oh. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say pizza or- Yeah, no, no, no. Buffalo wings. No. You want crack. Now, there is no evidence for this anywhere in the lawsuit, and they don't actually cite anything. Maybe they have testimony, maybe they have evidence that wasn't in the lawsuit now, but the fact of the matter is, it kind of comes out of nowhere. All right, so apparently Rick Fox is worried that Sklavos, who was an investor who came into Echo Fox a little bit later than the rest of them, he was a part owner of the San Jose Sharks until 2015. Anyway, Rick Fox was worried that this erratic behavior was because of all the drugs that he was secretly doing. Fox's lawyers go on to allege that Sklavos is basically indebted and, quote, effectively indentured to Raizada because he needs to support his, quote, drug-fueled lifestyle. This dude is allegedly some sort of financial slave to Amit Raizada because he needs to buy drugs. That is nuts. <laughs> this is... 
This is well, this lawsuit was written by somebody who has never done drugs in their life, which can be evidenced by this next statement. They allege that quote Rizada did illegal drugs with Sklavos to, in order to build their relationship, which is what led Sklavos to invest in Echo Fox in the first place and set up this whole plan. Did illegal drugs? Has anyone ever said that in their lives? What you need? Uh, one please. One what? Uh, one, one rock of one crack. One crack. A crack rock. Finally, they alleged that Sklavos took out a $2 million loan from Vision Venture Partners, again, that's Echo Fox's ownership group, in order to pay for the drugs and all the parties he loved. All right, let's run this back for a second, and I want to go through these events in the order that the lawsuit alleges they happened in. Fox is alleging that Sklavos and Rizada did some illegal drugs together, which let Rizada pull Sklavos into Echo Fox as a major investor and begin to do some fraud, which I guess is a plan they came up with while they were on drugs? I don't know. Anyway, Sklavos then got addicted to those drugs and became indentured to Rizada in order to support his drug habit and all the parties he was addicted to. Oh, Rob, you should have seen it. We had power crack this high. Oh, also, that whole thing about Sklavos allegedly being indentured to Rizada, well, Fox's lawyers allege that Rizada has a lien on Sklavos' house. That means that Sklavos owes Rizada some money, and until he pays that money back, Rizada literally owns his home. Again, if any of this is true, it is insane. There's also some other pretty crazy business allegations that are a little bit less, you know, drug-fueled. Uh, Fox's lawyers allege that after Sklavos and Rizada promised the Yankees a dilution-proof share in Echo Fox, meaning that their percentage stake in the company would never go down despite more people investing into it, they went around behind their backs and formed two more companies to raise money without kind of breaking that agreement, but still diluting their ownership share. The lawyers also allege that that $2 million loan that Sklavos allegedly took out to pay for his drugs and parties was at below market rates, which effectively let him pocket $2 million of investment money. There are over a dozen causes of action in this lawsuit, which is to say what Rick Fox's lawyers are asking for, and many of them stake the damages at well over $10 million each. There's also some pretty nutty stuff in the causes of action too, including allegations that Rizada was spying on Rick Fox, including hacking into his email and dialing into conference calls without telling anyone. I've read this entire lawsuit, and honestly, every time I got another sentence in, the rabbit hole got even deeper. The back, like, hundred pages are another lawsuit that is brought forward as evidence of how Rizada has allegedly done this before to other business partners in Kansas. Included in that are allegations that Rizada has a PR team that actively suppresses negative stories about him and pushes out positive ones about him constantly. And also, okay, and this is my favorite part other than the drugs, I guess, the lawsuit alleges that Sklavos basically gave Rizada a job at Vision Venture Partners without getting approval from the board. This job was very quickly raised to a $350,000 a year salary with health benefits and a $100,000 budget for meals and entertainment that he never had to get approved. The contract Rizada signed also said that the company had to pay rent, utilities, everything on his Beverly Hills home, which according to the lawsuit was $20,000 in rent alone. Plus, and this is hilarious, the lawsuit notes that Rizada also got to keep any membership rewards or points from any credit cards he used, even though all the funds were being paid for by the company. That is weird, but very specific to have in your lawsuit. All right, this has all been insane. We have allegations of drug use, of parties, of spying, and that's not even the half of it. I know this has been a lot to take in, but I want to give you an update on what's happening with this whole Rick Fox versus Amit Rizada saga. Honestly, we could do a video about each and every cause of action here. They are all just that crazy. But at the end of the day, the lawsuit alleges that Rizada stands to make around $19 million from the sale of Echo Fox's LCS slot on top of the $10 million he's earned from selling his ownership share in the company to Rick Fox and Khalid Jones last year. Adding up all the points of action, Rick Fox's lawyers claim at least or in excess of damages of $62.5 million. And at the end of all of this, that is how much Rick Fox stands to make if he wins this lawsuit. Now, a judge or jury could give him more or less than that, but the fact remains, this is the money he's fighting for. Not the money from the sale of the Echo Fox slot, not any revenue Echo Fox was making. This is it. This is what Rick Fox will have in the future. And that's where we are today. The lawsuit requests a jury trial, which it remains to be seen if a judge will even grant that. But whatever happens, this is a ton of money and some wild allegations. Whatever we learn about, we'll make sure we update you. And if we find out about any drug field parties, you can be certain we'll have a video about that too. I had a friend once, she discovered that her brother, like younger brother, was smoking marijuana. And, but she found this out by seeing a bag of weed under his bed. And she opened this Ziploc bag of weed and ate a 
fucking bud. And it's just like, why did you do that? Like, I didn't know what they were. I'm like, but why did you do that? That's not a good answer. Anyway, 